Okay, no swimming with giant otters because they might attack us. Let's take a look underwater. Yeah! Whee! This doesn't look so bad except for that stick. That's not a stick. It's a creature. A deadly one, too. It's an electric eel. An eel that's electric? Seriously? How is that even possible? Electric eels have special body parts that make electricity. They need this to help them hunt prey and defend themselves. What's that? Oh no, there's another one! That's not an eel, that's a snake. A ginormous snake. How many things live down here? Well, anacondas do, right, Chester? Yep, they're the biggest snakes in the world. They can grow to be as long as a school bus. That's big. Do they bite? No. They coil their bodies around their prey and drag them into the water to eat them. Cool. But no swimming with anacondas. Absolutely yeah. not. No. How about here? It looks beautiful. No giant otters, no electric eels, no anaconda. Oh, ooh, fishy, fishy. Little fishies, piranha with the sharp teeth that can eat whole animals super fast? Yes, but these red piranhas bark to warn other creatures to stay away from them. Woof, woof, woof. Cute otters that don't want to play? Eels with electricity? Giant anaconda snake that squeezed their prey? And barking piranha fish? The Amazon River doesn't seem like a good place to swim. Yeah, but this is where they live. Their home, not ours. The Amazon belongs to the creatures that live here. Sorry, Lily. Oh, I don't care about the rain. If only I could find some place to swim. If I could just find one place, any place to go swimming today. Well, how about this? I was working on the robo umbrella, but then it started to rain and it turned into a swimming pool. Yay, thank you, Willa. to play Marco Polo. Yay! 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 Yeah! <laughs> Marco Polo! <laughs> but all zebras have black and white stripes, Nash. Of course, there's more than one species of zebra. Chester, maybe that's it. It turns out there are three different kinds of zebras. And each kind of zebra has different stripes. Take a look, Nash. Nope, long stripes. Well, there's this one. Nah, -uh. here's the third one, the plain zebra. That looks like one we've seen around here. What do you say? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But wait, what is it, Lily? We still don't know how to pick out Natchez zebra from all the other zebras around here. Yes, but it also says that. Every individual zebra has a unique pattern of stripes. So you can tell them apart. But we don't know what that zebra looks like. Hmm. Heel. <gasps> Nash's selfie with the zebra. We'll totally be able to see its stripes now. Audrey, could you scan for zebra herds? Scanning. Scanning. I have detected a few herds of zebra directly ahead. All yeah. right. Then let's go. Wow, so many zebras. And we have to find just the right set of stripes. I'm having an engineering moment. Behold, the polo zebra matcher. It should be able to compare the stripe pattern of Nash's zebra to any other zebra. Yay! Is it here? Hmm, it doesn't look like Nash's zebra is in this herd. Well, I guess we'll keep looking then. Let's go! It's not in this herd. Or this one. Nope, 
Nash's zebra isn't in this herd either. I wonder why zebras even have stripes. <gasps> when they move, their stripes make it hard to tell where one zebra starts and another one ends. So it would be hard for predators too. That must be why they have stripes. For protection. My zebra! <laughs> Scanning? Scanning? It's a match! That's Nash's zebra! I think Nash already knew that. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Scientists think their stripes also confuse bugs and keep them from being bitten. I wish I had stripes. Martians? Uh, Marco, there is no life on Mars that we know of yet. For real? Totally. Take a look. What don't you see? Is it snacks? I love snacks. Well, nothing green, no plants, and nothing blue. So, no oceans, and also probably no snacks. All plants and animals, big or small, on land or in the oceans, need water to live. And Mars doesn't have enough. So that's why Mars isn't blue and green like Earth. It doesn't have any oceans or plants on it. So it's just all red rocks and dirt? Pretty much. Oh, <gasps> cool. So let's get down there. Buckle up, Polos. We're landing on Mars. Ooh, floaty! That's because the gravity on Mars is less than half of what it is on Earth. Hey, Chester, if there's no life on Mars, then what's that? Huh? <gasps> oh, Twax! Twax! Lucky! You're right, Nash. They can't be footprints. Unless whoever made them has really long feet. <gasps> Why can everyone understand Nash but me? Oh, maybe they're trails left by snakes slithering along the ground, like this. <laughs> I know my vehicles, and these are definitely made by a vehicle. A Martian vehicle, driven by a Martian creature. <gasps> <gasps> but there is no life on Mars that we know of yet. No water, remember? Then what made that? Come on, Polos, let's follow the track. Yeah! Whoa! Here we go, Polos! Following the tracks. Audrey, what's that up ahead? It is the tallest volcano in the solar system, called Olympus Mons. Whoa! Olympus Mons is ginormous! Stop! Look at that! Starting here, the tracks go all over the place. Whatever made them could have gone any direction. Let's get out there and try to see which way they went. Telescope! Telescope! Oh! For me? Aw, thanks. <gasps> oh! Ah! Eee! Wow, what's that? It's a hermit crab, Lily. Wherever you find hermit crabs, you usually find shells around it, too. I hope so. Thanks, Chester. <laughs> nice. More! Bye-bye! Bye, Nash! Ooh, these ones are pretty. <gasps> My shells? Where did they go? Mm -hmm. Huh? Nope. <laughs> Polos, have any of you seen my seashells? They're gone! Gone? No way! 
we'll help you search for them. Where's Nash? Ah! <laughs> uh... <laughs> ah! <Ooh. gasps> right there. Oh, sorry. It's okay, Nash. We'll rebuild it later. We have shells to find. <gasps> Lily, I think we solved the mystery. Really? A hermit crab. Lots of hermit crabs and shells. Yes, we found them. But why did they take them? Hermit crabs don't grow their own shells. They live inside ones that other creatures leave behind. Like hand-me-down clothes? Wow! What happens when one grows too big for its shell? It leaves it behind and looks for a bigger shell until it finds one that makes it a perfect fit. Interesting! Whoa, that's neat! <laughs> it's like we did trying on different sun hats. I love collecting seashells, but these hermit crabs need them more than I do. Enjoy, little crabbies. Need any help building your sand castle? Aw, that's nice, Lily. Definitely. Of course. <gasps> At least it has antler holes now. <laughs> Makes it a perfect fit. <laughs> oh, Chester. <laughs> I think somebody else has found a perfect fit, too. Right, Hermit Crab? Does he mean no? I think he means no this time. But it's definitely a rock. Maybe he meant this. Hey, Nash, is this what you wanted to show us? No! This time he totally meant... No, I got it. Come on! <sighs> hey, Lucky! What is what? it? Look! Um, cool? Is that what you're trying to show us? Mm -mm. Then what did you want us to see? Snake! Swimming, swimming, swimming! You saw a snake swimming? Snakes don't swim underwater, do they? I've never heard of that. Me either. Maybe he saw a long fish. Or a piece of seaweed. <gasps> a snake! <gasps> it's a snake! Let's follow it! It looks like it's taking a breath of air. I'm looking it up. It's called a banded sea crate. It can't breathe underwater, so it goes to the surface for air. It must be able to hold its breath for a long time. Let's time it. Hello, hello, snake. Come here, snake. Oh, and it says the crate is venomous. <gasps> Nash, Nash. No touching. No, no, no. It's coming this way! Look out! Uh-oh! Right! Oh, I mean swim! Nash, watch out! Oh, I forgot to tell you. Crates usually avoid divers. They just aren't interested in us. I wonder why not. Well, they eat fish. And we're not fish. Let's keep an eye on it. There's plenty more to see down here. I get it. The color says, hey, back off. I'm poisonous. You don't want to eat me. These frogs are amazing and all, but what about the waterfall? OK, OK, Gorby, we're going. Whoa! 
Hey, guys, look. There's tons of boys and dart frogs. Wow. 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 And they're on the move. Where do you think they're going? Well, frogs are amphibians, and they like to be around water. So while the rainforest is a wet environment... A waterfall would be even wetter. You think they're headed to the waterfall? We can follow them and find out. Well, we couldn't be any more lost than we are already. So let's get hopping. These little frogs really stand out in the big jungle. Yes, but so do you. This is way or Zaz way? Which way? Which way? I don't know, Nash. Look. Poison dart frogs. Follow the frogs. Follow the frogs. Come on, Polos. <laughs> 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 Huh? Do you hear that? Is that a waterfall? The waterfall! The waterfall! Whoa. Wow! This way, Polos. Hey, look! It's another poison dart frog. Those things. I think they're eggs. It looks like this is where poison dart frogs come to lay their eggs. They're so close to the water. The baby frogs, tadpoles? Right. Tadpoles must drop off the leaves and into the water, where they grow up to become poison dart frogs. Cool! Poison dart frogs are amazing! See, Gorby? I told you we'd find the waterfall, and all we needed to do was follow, follow the frogs. The frogs. <sighs>